Hello everyone and welcome back to Disco Elysium. This is episode 2. Last time we started our playthrough, our unknown, unnamed police officer question mark has woken up from a three-day drunk bender to finally get on the case. And we've just been getting to know the place that we're in, the city we're in, and some of the people in the general vicinity. We have not... We have not really ventured far, but we really just got our bearings to just understand sort of how the game's going to operate, and it was super exciting. Uh, so we, we are continuing exactly where we left off, uh, in the back behind the bar, with the body that's just lovely over there, hanging from the tree. Smells great. It's been there for a week. Uh, so we're going to try uh, in our in our journal. We've got some things to do. We've got, uh, you know, sing karaoke. That's the most important part. We have to sing karaoke. But in our free time, we also do need to track down our badge and also track down our gun. So we'll have to figure out where those things are. Um, but I think first things first, what we can do is we can head back into head back into the bar and we'll try and get the key for the uh, for the trash compactor. It also looks like we are able to take a little bit of a uh, a squiz up on the rooftop, which will be pretty cool. Uh, so we'll head back we'll head back inside. Oh, actually, before we head back inside, because we do have some people, uh, we've got this person that we can speak to out here. We've got a couple of people that we can speak to, so let's try and let's try and get some info. So, the Whirling in Rags is the uh, is the lovely establishment that we've been uh, we've been hanging out at. So let's have a chat, shall we? The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? You sound surprised. We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Okay, uh, I have questions. I have some questions for you. Of course. What can I help you with? <laughs> uh, my partner told me you may have ammonia. Can I have some? <laughs> sure, I'm done with it. Nice, she takes a small capsule out of her breast pocket and hands it to you. Nice, so that's going to be for the... It's going to be for that lovely, lovely bodily odor from out back there and help us maybe not vomit so that's great so inspect the body you know we got the ammonia from the gardener uh, it'll make it easier so we got it from the uh, the gardener nice go easy on that stuff it gave me a terrible headache nice um what is this uh fuck the police business excuse me she doesn't understand she's uncomfortable maybe you should drop this line of questioning Never mind. She shifts in her seat awkwardly. Uh, we need directions. Of course. Where to? Uh, where am I? What do you mean? Um, I'm a bit disoriented. This is Revachol, right? Yes, sir. District of Martinez. This intersection is called Roundabout North. I really like the natural pauses in dialogue when it you know, writes out, like, she looks around, thinking what else to say. So there's a bit of that natural pause, which is great. He knows where we are. He just wants directions. <laughs> the lieutenant seems uncomfortable with the level of disorientation you are displaying. <laughs> uh, what is up in the north? There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements. Not a lot, really. Uh, what's in the east? The harbour gates. Some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store, too. A fleet store. Wow, what is in the south? Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. Well, weather's shifted. We've now moved from... That, that was a, actually a really quick, like, snap, and it changed. Not a transition. It was like, it's, it's snowing now. Um, what is on the other side of the canal? Just coast. There's a little fishing village there. And a fish market. But that got closed down ages ago. Okay. Uh, what's in the west? It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. Okay, thanks. That's all for now. No problem. I have to run. Of course. 
I won't hold you back. <laughs> she wipes her brow with the canary yellow glove. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with after all. Um, one more thing. Can I borrow your gloves? Sure, keep them. I have another pair. She hands you the rubber gloves with no visible annoyance. Nice, thank you. Nice, we got gloves, baby. We getting gloved up on a Tuesday. Let's have a look. Plus one interfacing yellow gardening gloves. Thick latex gardening gloves in classic canary yellow. Maybe you should retire. Take up gardening as a hobby. It's worth a fort. Bye bye, bugs. Gloves. Nice. I am literally like the definition of fashion. The ampule of ammonia, thin glass tube wrapped in cotton netting used to treat fainting spells produced by Saint Baptiste Pharmaceuticals. Now, uh, I don't know if there's a, um, do I use it? Um, or do I, I guess I can just, I guess because I have it in my inventory, maybe I'll just be able to, it's like a contextual item that I can use when we approach the body. Let's talk to this gentleman, um, hanging out by the, by the truck. I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. Feel like a traveler. Okay. Um, the man mutters to himself, accenting the beats as he goes. Tomé Leon. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. <laughs> Anthrax. I am the law! Uh, keep listening. From another planet. Hey there. <laughs> What's going on here? It's the jam, my man. <laughs> he motions towards the sprawl of lorries with a sweeping gesture. What's the jam? It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating, and all around clusterfuck. Okay. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Upon days. Limbo, huh? So that's where I am. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's official. He too agrees. This is the antechamber of the afterlife. Nice. So how long have you been here? Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes and mazout. <laughs> Extravagantly phrased. But I can roll with it. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. There you go. We get the information out of him in the reply. It's been a week. So tell me, what do you need? Tell me more about this strike. It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making demands. No way in or out. Okay. What's the union demanding? Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like a strike negotiator type. They know what's up. Precise demands and so on. Ah, yes. From the Wild Pines. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, what do you think the company wants? They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. Ka-ching! <laughs> He makes a ka sound. He doesn't blame them, but he's not on their side. That's for sure. Okay. Anything else I should know? Anything else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. Uh, all of, all of who? Us lorry drivers. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere. To get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame him, really. Not you? Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. He glances down the road towards the horizon. A glint of something in his eyes. He tries his best to look nonchalant. But there's a rigidity in him. As if trying to conceal something warm. And deep beneath a cool exterior. Hmm. 
That's a low set. That's a that's a low one. That's seventeen percent to try some empathy. What do you see in his eyes? Let's give it a shot. We we love it going for those low rolls, baby. In his eyes, an half familiar longing, flecks of brown and gold. A half familiar longing, flecks of brown and gold. Familiar how? It's hard to say. His gaze wanders southwest, down the street that goes beyond the horizon. What's in the southwest, Tommy? Excuse me? He emerges from the reverie. A flinch jolts his frame. The question has touched a nerve. Hell, I get longing. I've felt something similar since I woke up. Man, I don't know what to say. Not much anyone can do. There's no helping in absence, you know. I miss my family. They're all I have. My wife, second kid on the way. Waiting all the way in Diora. And here I am stuck in this shit, so far from home. Diora? Diora of the Seven Seas. It's on the other end of Le Caillou, pretty much. On another island called Laurentide, off mainland. We've got a little place there. Can almost hear my kid laugh when it snows. And it's, and it's snowing right now. What's it like to miss someone? What's it like? Good. And bad. An ache that brings you joy. I think of them a lot. I dream up these silly scenarios in great detail of living with them. It comforts me. How's them? <sighs> what about you, cop man? You missing someone? Is that what it is? This feeling? <laughs> No, it's scarier than that. You're pursued by a hunter, smelling of apricots and sorrow, and the past. I love the Inland Empire and then the Half-Light coming in. I like that there is a a battle between our thoughts that comes in, which is like, wow, is, this, is that what this is? No, you're being pursued by a hunter, smelling of apricots and sorrow, and the past. Interesting. Well, I'm not gonna tell a I'm not gonna tell a random dude that I'm I miss my gun because I did not lose my gun. Nobody knows that I lost my gun. It's fine. I've put it somewhere safe to find later. I'm fine, man. I don't miss anyone. I feel for you, my friend. It's good to miss someone. I like it, knowing there's something more than what I have with me here. But thanks for this. It's nice to talk to someone, and I know it wasn't easy to ask. I hope you find your way through your own troubles. Nice. Every, like, these conversations feel so uh, real and natural, even though there's some comedic elements and things feel so great with, like, um, different aspects of your personality shining through, but, like, the, the dialogue and the, the, the genuine conversation that you're having with people feels very, very nice and engaging. We'll continue to ask him some questions. Know anything about the dead man? The one hanging behind the hostel there? He ain't one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. Okay. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Okay. Um, all right. Busy with what? Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. And your conclusion? A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. <laughs> what are you hauling, anyway? Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Yeah, that's my boy. Relax. He's merely joking. Wicked. I've always wanted a friend in the underworld. Ha! No, I'm joking, my man. Fowl runs a nice, clean business. This hall of cargo is mostly sporting goods. You know, tracksuits and that kind of thing. Can I have one? My outfit's a little dated. They usually get shipped to Grad in the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. Nice. Ah, can I get one of those fallen tracksuits you're hauling? We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. 
But I just, I want to rep the phone gear. Sponsor me, man. I'll be a phone police officer. We'll, it'll be good. They'll be like, man, look at that guy. He's, he's fit. He's in, he's in great shape. And it's all thanks to phone tracksuits. <laughs> okay, that's your machine behind you? This rockin' beauty. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. You interested in heavy-duty cargo machinery? A motor lorry, also called a camion, on Caillou and neighboring islands. This one looks roughed up enough to be some sort of found rust bucket. Maybe the A6. Nice, so the encyclopedia coming in for me to, like, follow it up. That a found A6 you got there. Good eye, my man. Yup, she's an old one, but reliable. Me and her spent a long time together. <laughs> That's cool. Right, add another question. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. Okay, I'm good for now. Good talk. Don't be a stranger. Gives a salute with two fingers. That's my favorite salute. <laughs> End. That's cool. All right, we've got some stuff that we can have a look at around here. Goods from the lorry haphazardly littering the surroundings. Um, now checking this one, I think it's taking us on, I'm just trying to see where it's taking us. It is walking us. Okay, yeah, okay, nice. Very interested in seeing where it takes us. A bold slogan, Humanox, covers the truck. It's this here. Is this like a memorial site? An old monument stands yeah. in the middle of the traffic island. Oh wow. Pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Yeah, wow. That does not look stable. That barely looks put together. Who is this? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philip III, the squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revachol, son of Philip II, the opulent, father of Philip the Fourth, the insane. <laughs> Philip the Fourth, the insane. My, my son is insane. All right, encyclopedia. What did this king do? Even by the standards of the Philippian kings, old sumptuous Philip was known for his profligacy. Profligacy? In what way? Well, he blew through the whole national treasury starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers, the suzerain of Revachol. Suzerain of Revachol. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the anti-centennial revolution, an end to his family line and the monarchy on the Insulindian Isola. Wow. How did he manage to blow through the entire national treasury? Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber where he stored unfathomable wealth. Krugerrands, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. I find it very interesting that we are having a conversation with our own brain in this regard where we're just delving into that encyclopedia part of our brain and asking ourselves questions and then I guess, digging up the answers to tell ourselves. He called it the Sol Auron. It was obscene. There were whispers he slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers, like some obese dragon, <laughs> instead of a bed, like a normal person. Okay. The man certainly knew how to live. Thank you, horrific necktie. The king is the king and he can do anything. Wait, really? There's no way that's true. I would like to sleep on gold, hustler style, okay. Wait, really? There's no way that's true. But wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled <laughs> cocaine addiction. The what now? You see, old Philippe wasn't just good at squandering the national treasury on gold and ceremonial weaponry. He was also a prodigious snorter of nose candy. <sighs> ah, nose candy. We love it. So he was addicted to nose candy. Uh, bloated druggy, you like having nose beers. This is a lot to process. His Majesty's courtiers said it helped him connect with the higher realms. <laughs> so he was addicted to nose candy. That's what the revolutionaries said 150 years later. 
right before they emptied out the royal mausoleum and dumped His Majesty's mortal remains in the Insulindian Bay. Wow. All right, let's get the encyclopedia answer on. What is nose candy? Cocaine. Okay, thank you so much for clarifying that. I mean, I knew that, but thank you. Okay, where is he buried now? Beneath the cold waters of the Insulindian Bay, thrown there by the revolutionaries after they cleaned out the royal mausoleum. What happened to the statue? The original was blown apart by communards, then further damaged during the landing of the coalition's airships during the turn of the century revolution when Martinez was leveled. We're getting some good history from our own brain here. Most historians think the coalition's hasty landing may have ultimately saved the statue. If the communards had more time, they would have reduced it up to even finer pieces. Who restored the monument? Some years ago, a group of liberal, artistically inclined individuals, designers mostly, thought it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of Rivershaw in the poorest part of the city. Okay. The statue is supposed to capture the moment it was blown apart, like an instant frozen in time, a rare butterfly trapped in amber, floating on a sea of shit. I love that. That's brilliant. So funny and nihilistic. People in Martinez tend to disagree, as do many prominent art critics and thought leaders with more nuanced social awareness than the young ironists. Nah, love it. Philip III, the squanderer, however, with his bronze face up in the air, doesn't seem concerned about what the hoi polloi think of him in death. <laughs> Not that he ever did in life either. <laughs> leave nice okay we got some experience we actually are able to level up so we have the ability to give ourselves a point of something and now i'm thinking i actually want to move in have a look at something down this way so we, we can pick something and level it up and put a point into electrochemistry now Oh, because it's a bonus from item that puts it up to a four. So electrochemistry is already at three. So because our physique is two, naturally, we can only increase these to a maximum of a two. These, it looks like we can increase them to four. Because our signature skill is in the psyche group. And then intellect, four as well. Conceptualization is currently five. Logic is three. I guess, yeah, bonus from... Uh, our logic is taken away at the moment because we're thinking about um, Guillaume de Million, uh, which should hopefully wrap up soon. And sneak under the... Uh, sneaking under the nose. Better than you are. Interesting. That's currently a one. That's, like, our lowest skill right now. I'm just trying to think about what has come on the most in what we've been doing. Considering we're about to do some investigation work, I might actually up my perception. I'm going to put a perception in there and level up. Now, accept changes. I'm just going to put a point into perception. Now, on our map, oh, this is cool. Um, map information is incomplete because we need to acquire a copy of the city map, but we at least have some details here. We just obviously need to uh, get a map. Because these are our white checks that we can we can redo. What is this? Nice. White tank top. Plus one for physical instrument. Item gained. Um, close. Tank top, gym vest, reeking of sweat. This sleeveless shirt is the best choice if you're not afraid to show off your masculine upper body and that hairy chest. Work it. So what do we current what does this currently give us? Plus one to conceptualization, minus one to suggestion. Okay. Take a look over here with this thing, and then we've got someone we can talk to over here. Money! Money, 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 money. Hello there. The small, wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile on her face. Pale driver. The photo, an ambrotype, 
from the turn of the century. As golden as her smile. As golden as her smile. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter. Some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your... <laughs> Grandma? Nothing. Her smile just keeps widening. Her hair is grey like lead. Excuse me, ma'am. I'd like to ask some questions. No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Wait. The lieutenant stops you before you can snap. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Why? Why? I just told you why. <laughs> if you say so. Alright. Let her be absorbed in thought. Um... Ooh, hang on a minute. Oh, my character is now automatically running places. That, and he wasn't before. What button was that? Oh, it, my my control scheme is now shifted, so... Oh, I think it's caps lock. Oh, nice. Caps lock actually puts on a permanent jog instead of uh, having to press shift to sprint. I like that. If I click on something, will I sprint over there? Yes, we have finally fixed our slow movement speed problem. Foreign car, kept in good condition. Nice. Now I'm just constantly moving a bit faster. That's good. Oh, and here's the event. Okay. The lorries probably stored fuel here. Now they store booze. You're not Deborah Dawes, you're criminals. Without work, I have nothing. I'll work for two. I'm just going to get this money real quick, if that's okay with you. I am sure that we will be here soon, and we'll talk to this group. There's the frit. This is where we could have gotten some... stuff from. Yellow roses. Yellow roses. Dozens of them. Tulips, too. Look at this. When you just, like, being able to zoom in and look at this beautiful art style, man. Melancholy pop song plays on the radio. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals ten cents. What is this machine? Hmm? Oh, that's the tear machine. That's the tear machine? Yes, but what is it? It's a machine for tear. You know, you find tear outside, like bottles or whatever, and put it in the machine, then it gives you money. Nice. So this is where we can come and pop in the and do us do some recycling for some money. I see. And how do I pick up tear for the tear machine? You need a bag, I guess. We used to have some, but we gave them all out, so. She shrugs awkwardly. Feel free to use it if you find a bag though. I'm sure there are some out there. Somewhere. <laughs> nice. Okay. That's good to know. Okay. Let's have a look. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on the back. Fritta slogan on the back. The packages are small, discreet, sloppily stacked, making them easier to take unnoticed. No need to worry about knocking over a display. Well, we don't even have enough money to buy one. We definitely don't have enough Savoirfware to uh, to steal one. Uh, what's that? What is what? The girl leans um, over the counter to see what you're referring to. Thank you so much. If you want to buy one, then it's only for Real. The raincoat patiently await purchase. Her attention is drawn to the raincoats. Stealing one undetected will now be more difficult. Nice. Minus one because we asked what is, is it. <laughs> That's cool. That's great attention. Alright, let's have a chat to her. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. She returns to her magazine. What's that magazine she's reading? Uh, before we go on, before we go on, what is this Frit? I don't know. Frit? She shrugs. And what is Frit? A 7 to 11 grocery store. 
<laughs> Why is it written with three T's? I think they think that the extra T makes it funkier. It doesn't. <laughs> the story goes that normal Fritta with two T's, a men's workwear shop in Vredefort, was already taken. So when Fritta Retail Inc. grew into a multinational corporation, they had to add an extra letter to avoid trademark infringement. Nice. What magazine are you reading? You mean this? She looks at the cover, boasting a colourful photo of two girls kissing. This is Pop Stars. It's got, like, famous people in it. It's not for sale. Looks like it also has something called Police de la Mode, featured on page 34. This speaks to you. <laughs> I approve of this. Very futuristic. Tap on the girls kissing. Um, forget about all that. What this is, uh, what is this fashion police feature? Point at the cover. Um, it's where they rate different outfits famous people wear. It's kind of funny. They're kind of mean. It's about who's the most stylish. I bet your hat would take the prize. Um, no. I don't like it. I hate it. <laughs> we are not the fashion police. We're the real police. <laughs> Let's proceed. I have some questions for you. Um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... Uh, can you tell me anything about this reality we're in? Reality? You mean, what reality? Economic reality, or...? <laughs> she is like a student unexpectedly called upon by a teacher. Can she answer the classroom question? Yes, tell me about the economic reality. I don't really know anything. I mean, I'm 15. Look, 15 is an excellent time to learn about economic reality. Yeah, that's why I'm working my ass off in Frit. So I guess, like, that's economic. Uh, what about physical reality, then? I don't know. What about it? Uh, where are we? We're in Frit? No, I mean, where are we on a larger scale? As mankind, or... <laughs> As a nation, or... I'm loving how she's trying to clarify these questions. It's, it's fucking great. Also, the voice acting so far has just been immaculate for every single person we've spoken to. What will her essay prompt be? Um... As a mankind. In a good place. <laughs> I mean, science is doing great, and this radio computer thing seems to be kind of big. I don't know. She shrugs, then folds her magazine back. Okay. What time is it? I'm certainly not aware. I don't know. Look at the clock. It's right behind you on the wall. The clock shows the time at 10.09. The hands seem to be still. <laughs> it's apparent the clock doesn't work. Funny. What is the revolution? When ordinary people take over the government and um, demand democracy. What about the one we had here in Rivershaw? Yeah, it happened like 50 years ago or so. Sorry, I'm not very good at this. At history, I mean. <laughs> uh, the Coalition, what's that? Someone told me there is one. Our government? Or do you mean something else? Sorry, I really need to finish this article. <laughs> I won't bother you with this nonsense anymore. Cool. She seems happy to return to her reading. Nice. We could, we could tell, ask her about the dead body. Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... Okay. Thank you for your help. I'm not going to pursue that any further. Uh-huh. <laughs> we'll leave. Because we've obviously already got what we need before even coming here in terms of the ammonia, so that's okay. Three T's! How idiomatic. <laughs> Welcome to Ivashol. Interesting. Specifically introduced to us as racist lorry driver. Welcome to Rivershol, announces the rotund man. The remark isn't addressed to you. It's addressed to the lieutenant. Hey, I know Rivershol. That's where we are. Don't you welcome to Rivershol me. My grandfather came here from a 3,000 year old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. You tell him, Kim. 
Every school of thought and government has failed in the city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. Ah, so you tell him. It's men like you who keep Revachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. What he means is, fixation on the Revacholian nation makes it harder for Revachol to actually attain self-determination. <laughs> He's right, you're undermining our best shot at real self-determination. Oh, come on man, I just said uh, welcome to Revachol. Uh, it's a lorry driver thing. I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here, that I should watch myself and behave. But you see, I'm an officer of the RCM. It's actually my job to make sure you behave. I would advise you to remember that. Kim's a baddie, love it. Silence. The air between them becomes tense. Yeah, boy. Your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine. Fucking A, Kim. I've got your back. You do make a cute couple. You know that. The lorryman spits. The lieutenant exhales and resumes his regular calmness. Now that that's settled, we have a couple of questions. Whatever you say, officers. <laughs> he waits impassively, cigarette smoldering between his fingers. He smells of heavy motor oils and his breath of high tar content cigarettes. <laughs> Probably Astro Whites. I'm loving the perception coming in. What was that argument all about? Uh, it's about biological determinism, natural law, the sorting of the races. <laughs> Not the most popular topic nowadays, with a coalition in charge and all. You might want to change the topic. That is, bury your head under the sand like common sheep. I get it. Someone has to be the unpopular guy. I'm not the only one. Look, I've read books. The science of racial theory has all been proved, even if some people don't want to accept it. People who've studied these things say that you and me are superior by design. So, uh, naturally, we Occidentals should be in charge. Obviously, you can see the merits in that. Yeah, I can really tell you're a prime example of superior design. Open your eyes. Haven't you noticed something different lately? An unfortunate downturn, maybe? Huh? When members of the superior race cease to believe in their innate superiority, they stop competing for resources. Yeah, what's the problem with that then? The problem? The damn kips are showing a real good game lately. Same with the mosquitoes. And the other introduced species, too. They're on the precipice of cultural victory. Bruh, he really went, like, full on into it, too. Because he started off with just that Welcome to Revachol thing, which, like, Kim launched in about. And then he, like, settled down. And now he's just, like, going into a full tirade. Cultural victory? What is this, then? <laughs> I've already made up my mind when I hear it. Uh-huh. It's true. Also... You need to realize the dangers of mixing races. Who knows what might happen if people don't stay in their birth place? You might end up with a new sub-race, with unknown characteristics leading to extra competition. That's why you've got to control the offspring. Isn't there like more important things to like worry about? Like, you know, the impending doom of our entire species? And how we're like hurtling ourselves towards the end times? Instead, we are at war with each other. Um, yeah, I'm not down with this. Why don't you go fuck yourself? Don't push your luck, Runt. Alright, man gives you a disgusted look, then turns his attention elsewhere, ignoring your presence. Nice work, bud. I'm gonna go have a look at this thing. Now look at this nice magazine rack. Jump Jams, a popular music mag. A glossy magazine, most able-bodied men. This issue hosts a top 10 list. All right, let's see what else we got. Oh, hang on, there's a bin I can interact with, guys. A bin for magnesium. Oh, nice, that's where we want to get our, that's where we want to get our magnesium, in the bin. Closed for winter. 
All right, we're gonna head back in now so we can get the key to the trash can. We got to know some locals briefly. Oh God, there's more over here as well. There are bottles inside. I could pick them up if I had a bag. Damn, I need a bag for my bottles so I can make this money. This mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. Two bullet holes in the front. You reckon they're from my gun? <laughs> Mail collection must have been heavily vandalized. A faint sticker on the side reads, RCM Emergencies Desk Number 8102, with a slogan, Mankind, be vigilant. Fuck you, mail delivery box. Ow, I'm weak, bro. There is a hollow, saddened ring as you kick the Levantorier mail collection box. It sounds betrayed. In disbelief, even. I literally thought I was about to lose some health. Your toe oh. has suffered damage. It hurts. Great. <laughs> Don't do anything physical. I'm a fucking stick figure, apparently. Cool. You really showed that mail collection box. Yeah, I did. He does not actually think it's cool. If anything, the lieutenant feels sorry for the poor box. <laughs> He's leaning in to inspect the layers of graffito that deface it. Rub your toe. You think so? You think it was cool? I don't. Let's go. Good mail delivery box. Let me pat you now. Now, the reason why the I kicked it... The mail collection box has no faith in your psychopathic manipulations. The reason why I kicked it is I thought maybe if I kick it, an item or something might come out of it. Thinking from a gameplay perspective didn't give me anything. God damn, there's so much that we can look at. This book has a rose, a pistol, and a half-naked dame on its cover. On the cover stands a very muscular man surrounded by flames. This is a book about Pate. Pate? Crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. This book, you don't really understand what is it about, nor does it seem important. A book about Boidero culture promotes freedom and roaming upstream. Book about the future. The government reads your mind using radio technology. And there's bottles on the fucking ground and stuff. I need a bag so I can start my recycling career. Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. Hello, sir. Ah, uh, hello. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? <laughs> what kind of store is this anyway? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Nice. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Don't be ridiculous. I know all these things. You're fooling nobody. Don't you sass me. Sir, are you okay? You've been standing here <laughs> silently for a while now. <laughs> Love it. Is it okay if I ask you some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. What, are you, what is your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. Plaisance. She's inside, minding the register, or organising the stock. The girl gazes at the window, then suddenly jolts, her eyes wide, as if recalling something. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. Okay. And you're standing out here in the cold because... I'm signalling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. I could help by brutally dismantling the free market. I should have a word with the store owner, maybe. Oh, no, no, sir. I'm happy to help Mum by luring in customers. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. Okay. Shouldn't you be at school or something? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mum keep this place running. Isn't school more important than this? Mum says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. There is stress and unease behind these words. She's reciting etiquette. Mm. How's the business going? Mum says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Behind her, the window has been boarded up. You sense the boards creaking, twisting for a second, and some kind of doubt in her tense shoulders. Cursed? In what way? 
cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Arse up. <laughs> I wouldn't really say it like that, but I guess so. This sounds rather serious. I should probably look into this. Narrow your eyes and look through the creaking boards on the window. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case. But I don't see much more to look into here. Yes. Please do also look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games are there, sir. How does this curse manifest itself? It does not manifest itself in any way. It does not exist. I liked it better when we were talking about whether it's appropriate to stand out in the freezing weather. But Kim, the plasmic manifestations. No such thing. Okay. Uh, anything else you wanted to talk about, sir? Hmm. Hmm. Enough about the curse for now. Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead. Annette looks at your shaved, prickly chin. It distinctly contrasts with the oily mutton chops that surround it. <laughs> I love that description. That's cool. What are you, uh, who are these, who are these famous people? Oh, kings and queens and generals of old, or artists and writers. Or musicians, those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. She scratches her cold, reddened cheek, then continues. I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. Reading those doesn't make the readers more famous, does it? But it does make the famous people more famous. It does. Fame sounds delicious. These famous people sound like a bunch of dorks. Annette's expression remains ever so helpful, but she doesn't say anything. <laughs> Never mind, I literally had nothing else to say. Okay. I'm not going to ruin this child's life. Okay, bye. See you around, Annette. Let's go take a look inside. Getting very distracted by just talking to anyone and everything and looking at any anything and everything. And it's... It's super enjoyable. Gift books and molten candy. You got any nose candy? Old sports magazines tucked away in a dark corner. Look at the detail on the wall. So good. The book collects the national recipes of Arda. They are all about lake trout. God, it looks beautiful in here. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. Look through the pile of Wirral related items. An endless variety of source books, lore books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, second edition. Nice. There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art, The Hunters of Catawack. Boreal Creature Compendium, and a Pick Your Path adventure game book titled Tales of Wirral, Cavern of Velcrag. Books in a board game section? Who wants to read books? Anything that really catches my eye? There's a box that says Wirral, third edition mega setting supplements module. The side panel notes a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures. A sticker on it displays 25 real. We are so poor right now. Let's leave. Immensely poor. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hyamdal somewhere. Hyamdal. Nice. That was probably like the the hero of our stories. Uh, look through the display of books. Rows and rows of Hiem Dalamen blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Hiemdal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Hiemdal. Return to Hiemdal. And the Solipsistic. Man from Hiemdal and the Hiemdal Man. Good God, how many are there? Maybe a hundred. Man from Hyomdal and the Sages at the End of the World. Man from Hyomdal and the False God. Man from Hyomdal and the Scorched Earth. Man from Hyomdal, the Hyomdal Colonies. 
Man from Hyomdal and the Swamp Beast. Man from Hyomdal and the Snow Crabs. Is that all? Dare I tempt fate for these beautiful adventures? Not even close. Okay. Man from Hyomdal in Hell. Man from Hyomdal and the Forest of Slaves. Man from Hyomdal under the lake. Man from Hyomdal. Hyomdal burning. There's even The Trial of Death, a pastoral combat game book set in the world of Yeomdalaman, and so much more. It is so good. I love the I love our internal monologue voice. It's it's such a such a buttery voice, you know? It's just like like that gravelly tone, but it's 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 also buttery. It's both very it's very coarse and rough, but also very nice to listen to. Do any of these books call out to me? A twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Ugh, what is it? Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular man from Hyomdal in chains, kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. Nice. She's laughing at him, belittling him. Nice. Between the throne <laughs> and the Hyamdala man lies a bonfire, <laughs> casting shadows on the wall. The shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. The title reads, Man from Hyamdala and the Devil Woman. Perfect. Hmm, aren't all women devil women? Especially those leering types who seem to wear nothing but an armored bikini. There's also some sort of a snake lizard beast slithering around her abdomen, chest, and shoulder region. Perfect. It's symbolic of vice and sin. Nice. The display rack before you is burdened under piles of Man from Hyamdal novels. I'll be back for you, Hyamdal and the Devil Woman. I'll be back for you when I have money. I'm going to read that one at night. <laughs> this is fucking great. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. The clerk extends a greeting. Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. So, you're the owner of this store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Her voice is high-pitched, as if to give it more penetration. <laughs> I love that I can literally just go... Uh, the girl outside mentioned this place is cursed. Your daughter is the one standing outside the store, right? Annette, yes. My daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? That's... that's annoying. Yes, of course. Wonderful! Did you talk to her? Yes. Great! On a scale of 1 to 10, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? <laughs> I'm not going to grade a human being. I don't do that. It's kind of the one that I want to pick, but I also want to make sure that we... I want to know... I, I want to protect the kid, so... And I'm already not feeling this vibe of putting the daughter to work. <laughs> Ten. She's certainly very polite and helpful. My precious. Her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labor. <laughs> the way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. Certainly not my business to state any of this. But we're pursuing dialogue. Mind your own business, sir. In our society, people don't get to tell each other how to raise their children. It's none of your or anyone's business. I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labor. You must be kidding. There's nothing like that happening. Depends. How much do you pay the kid? Good, sir. What does a young child do with money anyway? No, I save it for her as a fund. She's securing her financial future out there. Right. Okay. Such criminal behaviour would not happen in more developed countries. In some more developed countries, this sort of thing is two felonies. Child labour and slavery. Those countries will realise they've raised a lazy and spoiled generation. Are we done with the jokes now? Jesus, Placence. Yes, we've had quite enough fun here. Right. All right. 
Let's change the subject. The woman before you scans the store, her shoulders rigid and tense. Every now and then, she nudges her glasses. Farewell for now, book peddler. I'm going to go behind this thing. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Interesting. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Ah, uh, shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Nothing. Now please go back to browsing the books. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. She fiddles with her pendant. What are you trying to fucking mind control me right now? She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell <laughs> on you. Urging you to buy more books. Bruh. <laughs> I told you that, like, when I wanted to pick conceptualization, um, it's really funny because when we were first putting together the character, I was seeing all of these different personality parts of the brain of intellect and psyche and all that stuff and I was looking at this and I was going man I would really like I feel like it's going to be a type of game where it would be in my best interest to maybe sort of put points in those things that are that I relate to the most because obviously my brain and my thought process in these sorts of skills look like it would probably be a good idea and it would complement those things so it's it's really funny that the conceptualization part of this game is like very in line with my train of thought and thinking it's really weird actually it's kind of spooky it's kind of spooky oddly enough the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains the more alluring they become i am a cop i don't have a warrant though that's an abuse of power examine the strange cage-like trinket you see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. You warding off evil here or attracting it? This is a traditional Seminese ward, meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. Supernatural scourges. And who are the Seminese? Inhabitants of Ile de Fantôme, the Seminine Islands Seminine down islands. south. Okay. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. I'm going to ignore the curtains for now. Because actually I want to pursue the dialogue maybe and tell her about the cur- and ask about the cursed place that this Hello is. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. The girl outside mentioned this place is cursed. Cursed? Who said that? Annette? I will have a word with her. This place is not cursed. It has a robustly magnetic energy. Good for commercial activity. My business is thriving, sir. What in God's name is she talking about? Okay, that didn't go anywhere. Farewell for now. Interesting. Okay, let's go upstairs. I am tempted to look behind the curtains. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. <laughs> you see the name Dick Mullen over and over. It's me, I'm in books, I'm famous. A couple of spook novels hide amidst all the detective books. Thrilling tales of spycraft and daring do. And daring do. Look through the display of books. Crime fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Mm. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? That's because it'll be fiction and it sensationalizes everything. It wants everything to be shiny and, uh, and attractive and not, you know disgusting enough pudding and you know realistic you know sure thing you see dick mullen on the job 
Get me Mullen. Get me Mullen. The stalwart adventures of Richard P. Mullen. <laughs> Richard P. Dick Mullen. Mullen and the murder in the orchard. The sordid affair of Dick Mullen. A killing is declared. Dick Mullen in the murder house. The final case of Dick Mullen. An obvious lie. Dick Mullen in the clock tower. The ordeals of Dick Mullen. <laughs> Dauntless Dick. Dick Mullen's funeral pyre. No, the, the murder, murder of, of Dick, Dick Mullen. Mullen. Dick Mullen dies? Oh no. Turns out he faked it to solve a case. <gasps> Sherlock Holmes. Are there any more? Shelves fill to the brim with crime novels featuring the supposedly stalwart Vespertine detective Dick Mullen. Love it. So we've got Heim Delaman and Dick Mullen. Famous. Okay. Love it. Let's take a look over here. A quaint picture book brochure, very colourful. It's a tome of fascist uh, fascist magic, rather candid. The plaque on the shelf reads, Biographies of Famous People. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. <laughs> yeah, famous people, not really into them. Look through the display of books. Browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin. None of these seem important or relevant. It's all just vapid egoism. <laughs> Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, The Tragic True Love Story of Jacob Irv and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. What's it about? High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Irv. His blonde mane graces the cover. His blonde mane. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star called The Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. Hell yeah, boy. Next to that, River Sholian radio personality Guillaume Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real life crime and ruining cops' days. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. Leave. I do not respect your opinions. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. Ooh, can I get a map for, to, the, to the city here? The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. Nice. Old and faded, though, so I wonder if they're outdated. Look at the map of uh, Insulinda. This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is La Caillou. You are here. Another far away in the southwest, Seminis Islands, Ile de Fantôme. What else? Ozon, Laurentide, Fas a la Mer, Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands. All just specks of dust on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white, disintegrating into mathematics. <laughs> Visual calculus. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou in a bookstore. <laughs> it's you. Squint first. Can you see cities on the islands? You can on Caillou, Rivershaw, a single black star on Ozon, Fondelier, and Vimandu on Archipelagos, Croyan Moran, Villiers, on Seminine, Oldivai, and on Laurentide, Deora of the Seven Seas. Hey, that's the only one that I recognize because we spoke to that guy. All of those words have gone in my brain and they've already left. I'm not going to be able to recall so many new names. <laughs> 850 million people live on these little dots, an oceanic world of culture and commerce torn apart by history. Look at the edges. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Windy is the north azimuth. Grad is the northeast azimuth. 
Samara is the East Azimuth. Seo is the West Azimuth. Isolas, they're called. Okay. Connections to other worlds. Words past the Incelindian are known to you. You only know you've never been there. You have little idea what they are. Oh. Distant stars, gods, but looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, the Isolas are immeasurably large compared to you and very, very far away. Yes. Space and stars and gods and constellations and the cosmos make us feel very tiny and significant on this pale blue dot. Perhaps they are gods. Gods of distance and outer dust. I'm really surprised by how much uh, how much dialogue and information we're getting just by, like, for example, just looking at one map of many, you know, just you look at a map and you get this full segment, which is, it's just very, very bizarre. I really like it. Look at the map of Revishol. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the river Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the mega city. They sound rich to you. This is River Show East. Everything in French sounds sounds rich <laughs> you know and everyone wants to go to paris and they go there and then it's paris syndrome and then they're like oh it's not as romanticized it's not as good as what everyone said it was gonna be because it's so heavily romanticized <laughs> go somewhere else in france instead and west of the river Houdon. it's somewhere to live not bad then there's jamrock it's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg. It's almost as bad <laughs> and much larger. Then Coal City. It's the worst. I mean, a place called Coal City probably would be pretty bad. You feel you're just west of Coal City, somewhere above Jamrock and close to Coal City. Nice. Uh, look at the map of Martinez. It's not really a map. It's a tourist thing. A picture postcard with buildings on it. Drawn from an isometric perspective, a date in the upper right corner says 48. An isometric perspective. Oh, God, sorry. Uh, I should know that my mic's right in front of me instead of just swinging my hand out. Jesus. Um, I was just going to say, like, an isometric uh, perspective, huh? Pretty good. Pretty good, huh? It's almost as if we're viewing this world from the same angle. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of an industrial harbor, even the whirling in rags there. Storekeep, can I buy these maps? I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. Excuse me? You don't even know how much money I have. I could be rich. Could be. Don't make assumptions based on my fashion and outfit choices. They're quite valuable. Though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. We can afford it. You seem to underestimate my resources, but sure, okay. Yes, yes. Are you interested or not? <laughs> Steal it instead. Um, let's buy ourselves the map of Martinez. Let's buy that. Always good to be informed of your surroundings. Yes, thank you. Uh, also, I can afford it. And I still have plenty of money left in the bank, just so you're aware. Okay, now if I... Aha! Uh -huh, interact. Use ins, uh, interact button in inventory to inspect the item. A worn and torn map of the Martinez area dating from 48. The title on the top reads, Bienvenue River Shoal. It's a bit out of date, and it was, it was originally created by a design studio in a failed attempt to spruce up Martinez and turn it into a fancy tourist location. The worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez, with directions to appropriately touristy locations. Year 48 resides on the upper right corner. Trace a path through the grid. Your finger moves through the various streets, across Rue de Saint-Islaine, 
and Rue Sansipa over Sambrun and Martinez North. Finally, coming to a halt on the spot where you are currently standing, although the map gives no such indication itself. Okay, cool. Uh, so if I were to... Where am I? If I go in the journal and I go to map... Cool! We have a map! Oh, that's so cool! Okay, so... Oh, that's really cool. Tracing your fingers through... What is... What is with the giant cube? Okay, so that's there. That's the whirling in rags. Wow. The artistic interpretation of that is is really interesting when it gets to the edges. I guess there's a tsunami coming in. <laughs> like, for God's sake. So we've got the church, fisherman shacks, Martinez waterfront. Wait, what did... Oh, that's the... Oh, nice. Okay, we have... Uh... Oh, hang on, there's a map wall here. So we're currently here. Maybe we could have gotten a map from here instead of buying one. Or maybe we'll get a different map? I don't know. River Shoal Zone of Control. Oh, we bought a map instead. Maybe we'll check out this map wall. Another boring book just discarded here. This bookstore is not strictly about crime. Paranormal books. books. And biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Storekeep, what books Amidst are these? The various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. Okay. These three things are very important to the working class mind. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. How does that work? It serves platitudes, while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't have access to, and which costs more than this book, is garbage, and would only give you cancer anyway, without even curing your cold or anything. Wholeness, unity, balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of anything. Though it is important to note, when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill, in the first place. Huh. Does the book say anything else? The book features chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium. It even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from. How to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver. And there's even a chapter on the ancient Serais tradition of using duck gall bladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Pre and post factum apply. Nothing worth buying. Nothing worth buying. <laughs> this is just mundane garbage. What's even paranatural about this? Oh, nice. Find something truly otherworldly. Nice. We heard about the curse, therefore we, we have a plus one. The throbbing in your head increases with every passing moment you gaze at this shelf. Imagine failing that. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, a small green book becomes apparent. The title of it reads, Medicinal Purposes of the Pale. What's the pale? The book contains very little explanation on the matter. This knowledge seems to be taken for granted. What's this book about? The book contains descriptions of various pseudoscientific therapies, alternative medicines and folk remedies involving the pale, also known as Le Territoire. Le Territoire. For example, it recommends vigorously swatting one's naked body with a venic or hand broom made from the leafy twigs of a young birch tree from the near pale. Sounds invigorating. It is, and good for the circulation too. What else? It also recommends consuming distilled spirits like vodka or whiskey that have been aged in the pale. Readers are instructed to cover these jars in a shallow hole just inside the pale and leave them there for 30 to 60 days, depending on the potency desired. Uh, and what does this pale-aged liquor do? Among other benefits, it is alleged to restore a damaged liver to perfect health. Okay, I should probably get my hands on some of that. What else is in there? For general health and well-being, 
readers are encouraged to take regular strolls through the PAL. Though a sidebar cautions readers to limit each stroll to less than an hour. These strolls promise to cleanse the mind of worries and the body of toxins, especially if the perambulator performs this ritual in the nude. Nudity figures prominently in a number of these prescriptions. This is exactly what you need. Huh. <laughs> Anything else of note? There's an entire section devoted to cures for men who are struggling to perform their marital obligations. Ah, oh, well, I certainly don't need that because I'm not married. But if I was married, I still wouldn't need that. <laughs> you close the book and return it to its place on the shelf. Damn, we can buy it. So I feel like these books that we're able to buy seem, especially this one has stood out the most, that it actually seems to have some sort of positive uh, aspect to gameplay where this one can actually give us tips on like magnesium to for our morale. So um, buying these books is a very, in a ra very roundabout description, actually beneficial to, to gameplay. So we'll have to maybe look into these uh, when we have money. When we have money. Okay. Do we want... Everyone knows the most interesting thing about fascists was their magic. <laughs> Do we want to pull open these, these curtains? Like, is, does curiosity... Does curiosity kill the cat? Kind of. The curtains, tattered with age and- Pull them open! Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. I'm letting the intrusive thoughts win. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Her hand is closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Parapsychologically speaking, we're dumb if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. Parapsychologically speaking. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? This is about the curse. That's why you're afraid? No, it's just a storeroom for the employees, I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. She's almost begging you. Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly as a hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. The powers, but I sense this place calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. You do? My God, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. I don't care. You can't stop me. I'll open them. No, please just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. Talking is always good. Go see what she has to say. Okay. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. Okay, we'll ignore them for now. We'll hear what you have to say. My, I have the most patient partner in the world, by the way. I am walking through a bookstore, talking to myself. I'm standing there staring at a bookshelf in silence, analyzing all of the Heim Delleman books and Dick Mullen books and Paranatural books. And I'm sitting here just like this. Obviously, my brain's tinkering away. And he's just standing there going, oh, that, that dead body's been there for a week. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Hello again, esteemed officer. And welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Why are you so uptight about those curtains? I just want to know what's on the other side. I already told you. It's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Because it's the unknown and humanities have a natural curiosity for answers. And we must know what lies beyond, just beyond the veil. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books no if it's just a storage room then why does it have a Seminese ward protecting it it's just for decoration 
She wavers under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight-lipped smile. Then something breaks. Okay, fine. It's because this place is cursed. Just like Annette said, they don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? <laughs> so manipulative. She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her pendant. Host of hosts, she prays. Guard me and my honest business venture from the curse that lurks behind the curtains. How does this curse manifest itself? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around the dimly lit store. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains again. Didn't, didn't that curtain just move? Didn't that curtain just move? Okay, I'm a little confused. What does that mean? Everyone knows that all the previous companies in this building have sooner or later declared bankruptcy and their malicious spirits are still here, feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. Ah, uh, okay. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence, as if I was unwanted here. Could it just be the way that you approach business is maybe not so appealing? Why didn't you just tell me right away it's the curse? It's not good to talk about the curse, not in detail. The negativism, it's dangerous. Talking about the void wraiths angers them. Wow. Void raves. You have new words. <laughs> you have new words. Uh, have you sought help from anyone? Yes. I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. She nods at the strange cage-like trinket on the curtains. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear, it's not enough. Is your pendant part of the wards as well? Point at her necklace. Oh, this? No, it's a special Hymian amulet, blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. It doesn't work. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Okay. Desert pygmy shamans. That sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. That is correct. Would you like me to take the case? I could investigate, see if the curse is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be so they can return to their slumber. You don't know what... I've got stuff going on in here. I have a third eye for this kind of thing. You know, just let me in. My liege, you know what this case calls for? A paradetective. That's right. Me. Oh, gave smart-ass parenting advice minus one. No! Okay. Dialogue that we did earlier really just kicking us in the butt later on we really need to watch what we say I, I even said it wasn't my place to get involved convince her to let you investigate the doomed commercial area okay 58% I really want to get in there Time. no Time machine. Oh, I really want to get in there dude Ma'am, do you know how me and my partner are known to our colleagues back at the station? No. The storekeeper has crossed her arms. The lieutenant looks at you, waiting to see where this is going. You've got this. Just go with it. This is elegant. Crime bros. Not at Kim. We're called crime bros, my partner and I. Wait, that's it? I don't want to say that. Stop being such a fussy prude. You can't convince her without lies. No, it's really stupid. The woman before you scans the store, her shoulders rigid and tense. Every now and then, she nudges her glasses. Put skill points into drama to open this white check. We can open it if we put a point in drama. I know what I'm doing when I level up next. Or we force the curtains open. I really want to get in. The curtains tattered with age. Rip them apart. This time for real. 
I'm doing it. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little Sebanese wards. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. I warned you, you're unleashing forces beyond your understanding. Yes, but you didn't let me in, and I am just doing my paranatural duty. The void has compelled me to investigate. Wow. I feel it calling to me. Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. A vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. Let's fucking go. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Semenese trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. And this is where our physical nature really doesn't do a good job. I've got a pry bar, dude. And it's equipped, too. Can I not, like, try and pry the door open? Let's knock on the door. Only an echo. No one is there. A hollowed out dark echo. <sighs> Why can't I use the pry bar, man? Hiya! Oh god. Oh, the shoulder! <laughs> oh my god, my health is critical, dude. <laughs> Ow. Shoot. <sighs> Whose moronic idea was it to just run through the door? Don't you know that things like that... Oh no! Oh, I didn't realize we were on a timer. You feel something in your chest. An unnatural pressure. It's spreading to your left arm, your jaw. Oh God, I, I, I saw the health bar going down and it was too late. I didn't realize you had to quickly press a button to fix it. I thought that we were, it was just gonna keep us in like a critical state. Okay, I'm sure it's just heartburn. Oh God. No, it's many years of combined self neglect and self abuse. Try to remain conscious. I do have health to heal myself with. All you feel is pain. No. <laughs> You have to surrender now. I actually... We all do. It gets so dark. You don't even see her face. Like you always thought you would. Oh. You only see pain and fear. That is actually so miserable and sad. I can't believe I have killed myself by kicking a mailbox and trying to break down a door. I'm physically inept. Cop suffers final heart attack. A detective lieutenant of the RCM passed away yesterday. His death, though abrupt, did not come as a surprise to those who knew him. He was the heaviest drinker I'd ever met. Captain Ptolemy Price, the deceased superior officer, commented. That ain't easy on the ticker. He loved his liquor, sure, said Detective Chester McLean, friend and colleague. But I think before he ever had a heart attack, his heart was broken. According to an official statement given by the RCM, the officer was on the brink of solving a murder case. Bruh, when you die, you get your fucking death notice in the newspaper. Could you imagine, right, just for a moment, because it doesn't, it doesn't even have the option to continue. Could you imagine for a moment that that was it? If you die in the game, you die in real life, and that was it? Oh, wow. <laughs> Does it not? So did our autosave get deleted? Because um, if I if I load, hang on, our quick save. Interesting. When did we last quick save? Well, okay, we've already done the parenting advice. You know, I'm gonna heal myself. <laughs> I'm gonna just so I don't die next time. You know. Where are we? I don't think we've tried the curtains yet. Yeah. Okay, I wanna I wanna redo what we did, I guess, before the point of ripping open the curtains then. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust. Just as you're Sir, don't touch that. Parasite. I'll just quickly away. take us back to where we were. I wanna make sure that I've I get back to where I was. Sorry, I you do Because I did not mean to die. God. No! Talking if there is some the curtains. Nothing. Oh please go back to She speaks oddly enough. The more she tries to Okay. Now, I didn't, um, I didn't mean to die, so I just wanted to do everything exactly the same. 
Hello again, the steam. For God's sake. And um, well, I already just let it go, office. It's just okay. Are you happy? Host of hosts, she pr the cur it's the cur didn't didn't that Every there's something the curse. It's the cur didn't it's the curse. Didn't Every there's something wrong with this bit. Yeah, the wards help to keep it's not Wow. Oh, the there are new Desert Pygmy sh Most certain My liege. You know what this case calls? Do you reckon we could get this to work this a time? A detective. Time to fire up the old lie machine. Damn. I was like, oh, we have a chance to try this again. Did not work. No. The lieutenant looks at you. You've got this. Just go with it. This is elegant. Okay. Crime bros. You're called... What? What is this? A joke, Mr. Policeman? Do you commit crimes together or what? He turns away, not before you can see a small hint of a smile. He's struggling to not crack up. We got Kim to almost laugh. Technically, that's what crime bros would do. Yes, commit crimes. No, not like this. We're called crime bros because we like to solve crimes as brothers in arms. Sir, I really don't have time for your jokes. The situation is very serious. Okay. Uh, we'll leave. And I'll be back for that curse. Alright, we need to level up drama. We're being very dramatic already anyway. Okay. <laughs> now, that was a very lovely distraction. I'm like, oh, we're going to go in here and get the key to the trash thing. Proceeds to go and ex explore every inch of a bookstore. A very interesting bookstore, though. <laughs> What's going on here? Inside, you catch a glimpse of Union Paraphernalia, a strike poster, some red pennants. Alright, you there. I would like a key to the dumpster. Real mature, man. What exactly were you trying to accomplish? You do understand you still owe me money, right? Ah, paying for the damages. Here we go. You need to pay for the damages you caused in the whirling and rags, or you won't have a place to stay tonight. Ask around for money and be careful with your spending. If you're unsure how much you owe, ask Gart. Um, lovely. Damn, your feet thought we got away. <laughs> your, your feet thought we got away. Um, I'm sorry. I know it was irresponsible of me to run. You have to understand, I was desperate. You know what? The stupid drinks you've had are on the house. You know why? Because I know you can't pay for them. Not because you ran away. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now. I still have to charge you for three nights and the broken window. That's a hundred square. Okay. Thank you for your cooperation. Don't thank me yet. You still owe me a hundred real. If you don't have it by tonight, I can't let you up there. Okay. Now, what the hell did you want? I assume you wanted something to come back here. Oh, yes, Gart. You are very perceptive. Uh, it's about the trash container. Is it yours? Mine? No, it belongs to the Whirling and Rags. Well, I mean, that is the question I asked. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors, too. They put their trash there, and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous. Doesn't it? Something stirs in you. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Nothing stirs in me. It isn't callous. It's common sense. I wonder what this feeling is. Prod at him and find out. Doesn't it seem callous to you, guarding even your leftovers from the poor? Callous? What are you, Kras Mazov? <laughs> Almost all establishments in Revishol keep their trash locked. The whirling in rags is not special in that regard. Kras Mazov? Nom de Geer was an economist and a historical materialist. He was a leading figure on the Grad side of the Centennial Revolution, where he headed the nine-day government. Mazov is considered the father of scientific communism, Mazovian wow. thought, or Mazovianism. I am loving the encyclopedia teaching me things. It did say the nine-day government in the dialogue, but then the writing says 11-day government. So who's actually right? No idea. Um, maybe I am, Krasmazov. Yum, yum. Tell me more. He killed himself. Hmm. I'm no Krasmazov. No one was implying you were, officer. Where were we? 
we need those keys. What do you need them for? What do you think? To go dumpster diving, sir? It concerns the case. Please cooperate. Just bring them back once you're done, please. Okay. Nice. I've seen something here at the Whirling Gart. A thing I need to talk about. <laughs> By the way, I'm going to sing karaoke here. What thing? Uh, I saw a sign that said the mess hall is reserved for the Union. Yes, not the whole damn Union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. He tosses his head in disdain. They come here in the evenings, dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. We should find out who this Lord faction is occupying the booth. Loudness means talkative, and we need info. He gives you a meaningful nod. How do we find them? We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even striking men. If not today, then they'll be here tomorrow. Nice. Uh, I saw a sign that said I couldn't go into the kitchen. Why can't I go into the kitchen? What are you, a cook now? That's none of your business. Maybe I am a cook. You're not. You're a menace. Fine, okay, the kitchen is closed until 1pm, because the real cook is working. You can snoop around after that, if you must. Nice, that's only 12 minutes away. There's something else I want to ask about. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. You should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything later. Okay, by the way, I'm going to sing karaoke here. Absolutely out of the question. You can't stop me. Absolutely in the question. First we find a sad banger. <laughs> then we sing this place to shit. Your body is ready, sir. <laughs> Goodbye. So good. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank. And this place sure isn't it. Uh, do I even have one? But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. Uh, I don't know. Near? South, maybe. You don't really know, do you? Ooh, my breakthrough is imminent on my Guillaume de Million thought. Lovely. Uh, I don't. Does this mean I'm homeless? South, maybe. Doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. <laughs> I'll live in a dumpster. I don't care. Fuck everything. Hobo cop. <laughs> Could I trace the way back somehow to the exact street, the exact number on the building? You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Oh. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. Nice. I have the ability for a new thought. Guillaume Le Million. Thought complete. Okay. Dude. Bad news. Guillaume Le Million did not become a cop. In 38, he went on a tour to the Xinyao province in Safray, where he died of autoerotic <laughs> asphyxiation. Uh... His body was found hanging from a decorative dragon tree in his junior suite amid drug paraphernalia, unwholesome objects, and the Sylvia Trainer single, Wonderland, skipping in the background. And yes, you can take this as a metaphor for Revachol in the 30s, and also as a warning. <laughs> that is one hell of a way to go. Dude, I love the concept of uh, reaching this thing where we've been thinking on this in the background for a while. We have this thought complete and then we get this information. There's the solution. Bonuses. Blood oxygen is boring. Plus one to the pain threshold and all psyche learning caps raised by one. This is such a good mechanic. This is so interesting and fascinating. Like, just something I haven't experienced in a video game before, and it's really unique. I really like it. Look at that. There we go. We got a we got a thought in this bad boy. Now we can forget thoughts, because it looks like we can have, I guess, a bunch. We're in the thought cabinet. Interesting. And then if we You do not have skill points. So you can use a skill point to forget. That's pretty cool. So, Lonesome Long Way Home. Temporary research bonus gives a plus one to encyclopedia. Factual memory returns. Research time, six hours. 
I'm really, really liking the artwork as well that's given to these. That's cool. Let's rewind. Let's trace your drunken steps back home. Jump across the raised channel bridge southwest of here. Fall over. Get up. Get off the asphalt in 20 minutes. Shuffle your feet through courtyards, scaring little children. Go onto the great raised motor tract, the 881, until you reach Le Domaine, eminent in North Jamrock. The streets are frozen this time of year, caked with ice. Walk down Main to Perdition. There's a side alley there, and your footprints in the mud. Internalize. Cool. All right, we're internalizing another thought. Lovely. Okay, now. Find out who is in the union box. Gart has told you some unruly union men gather in the mess hall of the whirling in rags. They're not there today, but most likely they'll eventually show up. Keep an eye out for them. Okay. Cool. Sounds good to me. Now, in eight minutes, we can apparently go into the kitchen. But for now, we have the keys to the trash. Um, so I think... Hmm... Oh, keys, right. Uh, key to trash container. So you can't actually read a description on keys or anything. It just goes in there. Most people settle for bed after nine or not long after. I really like that the game moves with a, with a time thing as well. We do need to be cautious of that. Now, where is the map wall? You are here. Where is the map wall? We need to be up. I think it's... What's this? An old coal box with a matrix of push I think buttons. It's up that way. All the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. East Delta Commerce Center. This must be the name of the doomed commercial area. Oh, main hall building, eh? Andre Orlando Hair SEA. Uh, Temoteps Boxing for Young Athletes and Gym. 24 hour window. Emma's Fashion Atelier. For, for Bronze Taxi. The rest has been burned off. Slipstream SCA. Fortress Accident SCA. Revishol Ice City. Main Hall Building B. Whirling and Rags. East Delta Pinball. Entrance from Building B. Empty Card and Leave. An off key melody starts playing after you ring the doorbell. Then a woman picks up the receiver. Uh, Kuno, who's just around the corner, probably uses this and prank calls the bookstore. She thinks you're the gremlin child. What would he say to this? This is the police. Please open the door. What would he say to this? Placence, it's me. Please open the door. I'm trying to get in. Oh, I'm sorry, officer. I thought you were... There's a spot of static that overrides her words. Indicates that the line has gone dead. Andrew Orlando Hare. You ring the doorbell, but no one answers. What an ominous name for a hair salon. Doesn't yeah. bode well for anyone's hair. <laughs> Boxing for young athletes and gym. All you hear is static, but no one answers the call. 24 hour window. You ring the doorbell, but. Emma's fashion. You wait for a minute or two, but. For bronze taxi. Looks like someone has melted half the plastic off with a lighter. <laughs> the doorbell doesn't work anymore. Slipstream SEA. You hear static from the intercom speaker. It sounds as if someone has picked up the receiver, but isn't saying anything. Interesting. You can almost hear them breathe. Ooh, perception hearing. Hello, is anyone there? Yes, hello. This is Tricentennial Electric. This is a woman's voice crackling uh, and fragile through the static. Have you come to- Have you come to place an order? She sounds almost antique. Yeah. As if her voice was being played off an old wax cylinder. A receiver must not be working properly. Hold on. Tricentennial Electrics? I thought I was calling Slipstream SCA. Oh my god. The lieutenant exchanges a look with you. Sorry? It's you. Oh my god. I didn't think I would hear your voice here. Who cares that you don't remember her? Just go along with it. No, something's wrong here. Are you sure she's talking to you? Yeah, is this like a pre-recorded thing? And it's just like, we're just conveniently speaking at it? Uh, who are you? Where are you? Michelle, just please.
She stops, and you can hear her breathe heavily, her breath distorted by ancient static. Why did you even call? I don't understand. You've been gone for months. I thought you didn't care. <laughs> Hold on. Tell me what's going on. What did I do? Ever since I came to work here, it's been as if my mind's been wiped clean. A spot of static overrides her words. When she speaks again, it sounds like she's submerged. It's so nice. What the fuck? It's so nice to be able to finally forget. Forget about what? She sounds like she's about to cry. Oh god, please don't cry. She doesn't answer. You said it was nice. What's so nice about forgetting? Silence. The only thing you can hear now is static and waves washing ashore on the bay. Yeah, I think there was a pre-recorded message that was playing on the thing. What just happened? Another seagull passes by. <laughs> it's getting cold standing here, staring at the silent call box. I don't know what happened either. We should probably stop playing with this thing. Fuck. You press the number sign on the keypad that terminates the call. Twelve name cards on the call box read. Oh, hang on. Something else. We have an even chance this plus one wax cylinder. We can do slipstream again. No. Damn it. Hold on. The last thing you need in your life is more hysteric emotions. Forget it. Find something else to do. Okay. Fortress accident SCA. Silence. No one's home. River Shoal Ice City. Silence. No Main hole building B, whirling in rags. Doorbell. Let's speak to Gart again. Nothing happens oh. after you ring the doorbell. They don't want to they talk to you. Want to talk to you. <laughs> East Delta Pinball. Silence. Empty card. This button looks new, but someone has removed the name card. Nothing happens when you try to ring it. Huh. This button looks new. It's probably not connected yet. Hmm. Okay. Leave. All you hear is static. Leave. Okay. Interesting. That was bizarre. Totally bizarre. Okay, let's go check this garbage. This is the logo of the municipality, uh, municipality of Revachol. Let's open this, this bad boy. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. With a well-oiled crack, the lock pops open. It should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Didn't they just have a premonition that there's something in there? There is. But you won't like it. Sweat forms on your brow. Your hand is still on the lid. Open the lid. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. Good thing I'm wearing gloves. We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for over a week. Nice. Look under the boxes of carton. You see milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. <laughs> this is food I ate a few days ago. You've done this before. The movements are recorded in your elbows. The methodology in your fingers. You're used to this. God, look at the, I, the artwork for each of the skills. So good. Used to what? Dumpster diving? No. Searching for evidence in the trash. Ah. Dive further. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Soleil cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below. And turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Okay. Pick at the rags. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. A pair of denim trousers. Mmm, grab them. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes? <laughs> Cadaverino door is faint. If these belonged to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Drop them in here, officer. Ooh, black plastic bag marked evidence from his pocket. Bag the trousers. Guitar marked blue jeans. Pockets empty or empty. He wore them with a belt, too. A white belt. The loops appear stretched, but... Uh, isn't that the belt that's around his neck? The belt is missing. That's it. 
Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. Oh, okay, reach for it. What's the slimy thing? A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. Ooh. Spicy, bag the shirt. This is a military type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of ribbed shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Anything more? Continue. The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. But other than that. A thrown out towel, a mug, that's all. All right. We should go to Gart again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hostel cleaning the yard. Or that one. I'd advise against confronting that force. Okay. You think someone from the Whirling might have been involved, maybe? Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash, the lid was locked, and his establishment had the key. It's just a small loose thread. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna avoid. I'm gonna take Kim's advice and avoid the kids too. We'll just say okay, proceed. The lieutenant nods, then looks back into the trash container. Search the food waste. It's just organic waste, cold and slimy on your hands. Apple and potato pills mostly, unidentified sludge, and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey. But hey. Nothing. It's nothing. Nothing more to see here. What's this? What? A blue piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny. Looks like the corner of something. All right, pick it out. Something larger. A clipboard. A blue plastic clipboard with moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes written in a man's handwriting. In a man's handwriting. Officer, is that your paperwork? No, it can't be. Yes, it is. Look, this plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You even got an autopsy form. A miserable looking slip of paper sticks to the board. No, this is mine. Oops, this ended up in the garbage. God damn it. <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, how did this get in the trash? It has a foreboding quality to it. Maybe I needed to lose it for the great bloodletting to begin. Oh god, okay. So many good choices here. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with number two. What are you talking about? I speaketh the tongue, Kim. Doeth though also thorough inventories. <laughs> you should take stock of your notes. Make sure it's all there. Official notes contain informants' names. If some of it has fallen into the hands of the RCM's adversaries, bloodletting may well ensue. Cool. Does it have information about who I am on that, on the thing, maybe? <laughs> okay, I'll do that. It would also not hurt to start taking notes on the case. Now, tell me what your eagle eyes see. Or are we finished? <laughs> Legolas, what do your elf eyes see? The mug. I'm getting that mug, too. You pick out a broken mug with an oddly racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. Uh, an antique? Only in its social sensibility. Let's have a look at the mug. Mm -hmm. The lieutenant briefly glances the mug, then returns his sight to the trash. Okay, let's close the lid. The container sounds a muffled gong. So glad that there was a sound effect for that. That was cool. Neat touch. That's one thing of the least. I think we got it all. Okay. Open the lid again? No, leave. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Um... So, <laughs> great. This is the ledger you found in the trash. It's full of notes written in a man's dense cursive. Have a closer look. Maybe it can be salvaged to start keeping notes on the case. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Love it. <laughs> Anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper. Desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. Like, who knows when you run out of toilet paper? And I mean, I could be shitting while taking notes, and then I need it. I mean, it's, you just gotta think 
practically, dude. It's a metaphor for you. Or it's a metaphor for me. Below the pathetics, terror. Do not look into its blue heart. I will. Inspect the toilet paper. It's just toilet paper. Stick it to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Maybe it's kitchen tissue. Look, maybe it's kitchen tissue. They look exactly the same. If you want it to be kitchen tissue, it can be kitchen tissue. Thank you, Damage Ledger. It's not, though. <laughs> it's toilet paper. <laughs> oh, my, my good perception coming through. Okay, leave it there. It's cool. Mm, cool toilet paper. I mean, kitchen tissue. Yeah. It says, everyone look at me and my kitchen tissue covered cop ledger. I don't care. My ledger is droopy and it smells like a urinal. Exactly. I love that based on particular choices that I've made in the dialogue, the voiced writing actually responds to those things when I talk about maybe it's kitchen tissue, like, and let's leave it there. I really like the, the fact that it's all voice acted as well. It's so impressive. Let's inspect the clip. An aluminium block runs the width of the board biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. Nice, run your fingers across the aluminium. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. Looks like an official mark made to be low visibility outside the right circumstances. Hey, Lieutenant, what is this? Point to the sticker. What? That thing. It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information to RCM property. No, oh, interesting. What kind of information? It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. Ooh. Maybe yours will have how many cases you've solved. <laughs> How many years you've been on the force, he's thinking. It'll have that. How can I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. Ooh, like the, the like a torch? Like, for example? All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. Cool. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Okay. He returns to his neatly kept notes. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand. It's a sorry sight. <laughs> Browse the white papers. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, Case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. Okay. What is in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate, due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases, undertaken, not completed, mind you. <laughs> okay. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week, on average. And none of them solved. Um... Is two cases a week a good caseload, Lieutenant? Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. <laughs> two cases a week appears to have been my load, Lieutenant. I'm not sure I completed them, though. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. I burned out, all right. That's okay. We all do, sooner or later. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly illegible. Okay. Uh, there was mention of a naming convention here? Yes. It appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system 
Each investigation has its case number written on the margins, yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. So naming the cases. A title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from <laughs> snoop fiction and Vespertine cop show staples. Uh, of course. Oh my. And they're written in capital letters too. Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, the Unsolvable Case. Nice more. Others appear more light-hearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location and the murder at the Ukar parlor. Even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. Wonderful. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close. Kim, my cases appear to employ some kind of naming convention. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? No, I mean a um, non-numeric one uh, with titles. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Uh, why is that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. That's cool. I seem to have named a case the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that to amuse myself. That's cool. That's, I, I like this. This is great. I pray his loved ones never find out. <laughs> Hey man, whatever whatever gets you through a tough day at work, you know? What happened to him? Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. Aish. I have to open an official case. Is, uh, is there room? There is, for precisely one more. <laughs> Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Nice. Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. Ah, commit to paper using the pen that Lena gave you. Now I don't have to bother doing a quest to get a pen. Because I already got a pen. Let's commit it to paper, baby. The tasks you've completed flow out of the kind green ape pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. A language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Okay. Inspect the victim's body. Wonderful. Interview the cafeteria manager. Great. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. Great. Cross out the ones you've already finished. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. Progress. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizens' militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Lieutenant, have you by any chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? Ooh. <laughs> Shit on a stick. The Furies are at home in the mirror, the setting sun. I mean, the hanged man really is just... it. It's just the name for the case. I mean, you can't really have it any other way you know i don't know what it has to do uh, with furries in a mirror or or the sun setting on a stick like we can just go with the hanged man i think that is to the point nice and simple there is a man he is dead he has been hanged he is from a tree um did i mention he is a man that has been hanged from a tree it just really fits that one we'll go with that great that's great that's actually what I was thinking too. The Hanged Man. Good, strong name. Nice. We have a very good name for the case now. Thank you. And here, and I've got approval. I've got validation in, in, this very, in this very safe name for a case. I'm going to start calling it The Hanged Man. It's good to be sorted this out. Yeah, it is. It's, it's great. The Hanged Man. It's great. All right, I'm done ins inspecting these. Close the case files. You don't exactly close them. So much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. 
They're a little further from your nose now. Ah, Kim explained the system, so I have a high chance of reading the case files now. Let's try that. Yes, you can piece them together using the alphanumeric code on the margin. Yeah. It always begins with HDB41, then date of initialization and time of arrival on the scene, followed by the title. For example, HDB41120117 Zero, zero. The Next World Mural. The Next World Mural. Wait, HDB 41? Weren't those officer precinct? Why, yes. Your precinct number is 41. Ooh. HBD. Those are my initials. We're getting closer to my name. Every last alphanumeric in the files begins with it. And these are your case files. It's safe to say HDB are your initials. Happy Dinkelberg is my name. Horace Debbie Beringer. Hram Darjan Binzakin? Those aren't my initials. I'm not, I'm not feeling them. <laughs> wow. I don't know what to say to that. I got nothing here either. Logic really isn't the best faculty to have this conversation with. But it's the one you got. So sorry. Thank you, Logic. Yeah. We're staying out of this business for now. HDB is bad news from yesteryear. It's shit, Honcho. Dinkelberg. We're a happy Dinkelberg. How long does it take to read a case? It takes about half an hour to piece one together, using the system you've devised. Where do you want to start? It takes half an hour to piece one together. Really? I can revisit this. Let's just have a look at one. Because I'm wondering if that is his... If we're being told, no, it's, it's going to take half an hour to piece one together. Let's have a look. The next world mural. This one is relatively easy to reconstruct. Overnight on 1202, a graffito... Nay, a mural appears on an eight-story tenement overlooking central Jamrock. The building is a sparsely inhabited ghost tower, part of a failed real estate development called Grand Coudon. Cause of failure, rent too high. Okay. The mural is enormous. Two silhouettes, a man and a woman, are kissing. The text cut into their form reads, True love is possible. Only in the next world. For new people. It is too late for us. Wreak havoc on the middle class. People call it that thing and that fucking thing. It's visible for miles. In two days, the station's complaints desk gets clogged with requests to remove the bummer. You and your partner are assigned to the case. The graffito crew is easy to track down. Only the bell lectures have the literage of industrial paint to cover the surface. One of the graffito artists is rumored to be rich. They take responsibility for the execution, but not the design. The ideologue of the next world mural, as the crew calls it, remains an unknown. Interesting. Wait, do I ever find out who came up with it? The case files do not show you finding the author of the design. Okay, read on. The crew agrees to clean up after themselves. However, your partner, JV, is against the removal, citing public support for conservation. This leads to a debate in Precinct 41, which then spreads to the streets of Jamrock, ending in a rare plebiscite organized by you and the rest of Row 3. Okay. The 9,000 people subjected to the mural's message, all of Lakeside, Central Jamrock, and Villa Lobos, plus half of the eminent domain, participate in the vote. Although the case begins with what appears to be a lot of rambling on the streets as to how juvenile and stupid the mural is, given a choice between two options. Oh, remove the mural, it is wrong. Keep the mural, it is right. A staggering 78% of voters choose to keep it. Turns out the opposition were a loud minority, and that love truly is possible in the next world for new people. 
and it is too late for us. Interesting. So we're piecing together the ca like a, a previous case with choices. All that remains is to wreak havoc on the middle class. <laughs> uh, the middle class are not to be blamed. It's human nature. I like it. But can't we wreak havoc on other nations instead? Interesting. The choices here, but... Um, hmm. In any case, it appears to have been a rare case of civil activity in the quarter. And agreement as well. What do you want to tackle next? Okay, so we've gained experience from that. Does that mean we have now um, kind of previous? We'll just kind of put together how the case plays out or played out. We'll say that we can revisit this just for now. We've got more that we can have a look at. Not much has changed in the meanwhile. A bunch of sodden papers still sags from the clipboard. Cool. So I can read a case file and put that together. Let's have a look at the rest. We'll we'll revisit. Otherwise, we'll get lost in our papers and we are standing outside this smelly garbage still. Let's browse the yellow ones. In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red. All covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms, waiting to be filled out. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out, according to type of form. What type of forms are there? Three. The topmost are misconduct fines, the middle ones are station calls, and the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. Okay, misconduct fine. A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields. But they appear pleasantly vague. Okay. Station call. These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. All in a print so small <laughs> it could be considered downright cute. Field autopsy. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs. Okay, enough of these, close forms. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. Okay. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copier paper. <laughs> Look at the clipboard. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back, you see the embossed letters RCM. What did you say the color was? Blue. Thank you. The blue heart. Don't look into it. All right, Inland Empire. Shake the ledger. Something rattles inside, ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? And something small inside? Light, made of paper or cardboard, or dried flowers, perhaps. Permeables. It's not hidden, per se. The compartment is made for permeable materials. That would get damaged if something happened to it. Is it my... Could it be my badge? The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. How would I open it? With your hands, you four-sized pages hang from the clip, screwed to the top of the board. Oh, I'm thinking about my long way home, so it, it takes me down a point. Okay. Open it! Mm. Nice! The two sides of the board appear slightly misaligned, like a drawer that's come off its slides. If you bend the plastic on your knee, slowly, the slides snap back into place. It should be possible to just, you know. Interesting. When you are just like, nah, I don't want to do it. Slide the drawer open. Without resistance or sound, 
The two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. What's inside? Two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. Not my badge. Pick up the ticket stubs. Two octopuses are smiling, reaching their tentacles toward each other in the colored pencil drawings. The tickets permit access to the zoo in Revachol East. The aquarium costs extra. These let you go there, too. Kim, you want to go to the zoo in the aquarium with me? It's going to be great. There's octopuses are smiling. You and me are octopi and we're holding tentacles. What the fuck is this option? Like, like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what? Pick up the card. Proceed. What the fuck? It's just so out of left field, dude. Thin wax paper has been glued to a piece of cardboard. Sounds like leaves rustling when you pick it up. You see violet flowers, floral patterns, patches of glue. Smell it. It smells of chewing gum. Apricot flavored. Apricot flavored, eh? A touch of cinnamon. The end of summer. You think the label says tutti frutti. Thank you. Open it. Familiar handwriting lines the inside of the card. Looped, round letters in a woman's hand. A woman's hand. Is this now, when we died earlier, it said something about we think we'd see her, you know, but we saw nothing in the end and we died. And then it also mentions in our eulogy when we were dead in the paper that it's like, we, he's a broken man. We thought he was broken before. We have a, you know, we've got a, we've got a history of heartbreak. A young woman in her 20s. There is care effort and a smile you think although that is not something you can read from someone's handwriting okay harry it begins you're already reading i wanted to write you a letter so you can read it when you wake up maybe it will make you happy our first name is harry we have one name out of our initials so hdb harry the baby throw it away please but it will make me happy. A merciful wind blows in from the Bay of Revachol, dusting the ground at your feet and raising newspapers far away. You feel the card slipping into it. I want to read it. Hold on to it. Read the card. Your hands shake, holding on to it. Every morning when I step out and you're asleep behind me, it says, I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest down voyager road down voyager road every step i take it grows by the time i reach the fuel station it has filled me entirely i step onto the light rail and look back sparks fall from the bow collector i know it will be like this until late afternoon when i get off the 42 and walk back to you wow this is gonna be sad but it's also painting our way back home i think Voyager Road, reaching a fuel station, step on the light rail. We're getting directions to our house here. You, you, every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul, and I will always, always, always come back to it. So when she would leave or leave, go away from us, she would feel so insanely sad to be distanced from us. This is a memory that our character holds on to, clearly. Keep reading. Kisses, kisses, kisses. You feel the air sucked out of your lungs and the blood sucked out of your head. Everything around you gets dark. Small white dots appear. You feel the ledger slip from your hand. Whoa, what the fuck? No, no. Hold on. Dude, what? Hold on. To what? There's nothing. Oh my god, what? Detective, is everything alright? Oh my god, fall sideways. <laughs> Fuck. Ah! We're on a loading screen. We're on a loading screen. We're on a title card screen. I'm so confused, dude. We got- we got given the title card. Begin! What? 
What does that mean? I guess that was just the that was just the setup, and then we we recall our memories through the ledger. We read this note. We fall sideways. Disco Elysium title card. There is nothing. Begin with the ancient reptilian brain. Again. Oh my god, I'm here again with my reptilian brain. Nothing? Nothing, sad brother. No treachery, just blackout. Just lie there, passed out. Well, almost nothing. There is the ground below you, that's still there. And the small light that's on, fluttering, somewhere in the basal ganglia. Who's that? That's me. Blue eyes, that's me. Who was that? Who was what? He speaks of the sickening longing, the unwell emotion. Even in the darkness, he's grasping for it. Still trying to hold on to the great sorrow slipping in the water. Slimy. No, I, I was cool. I'm cool. The cool when you're dead. Brava. Here in the paleomammalian cortex, we call it the shadow. Because it's always there. White morning. Tell him. Tell him. What am I smelling? Ah, yes. In the old factory system, they call it the apricot chewing gum scented one. It's unhealthy of them to linger on it so. But as they say, what do you do? Mm, the apricot chewing gum scented one. And there's two ways to look back on it. I believe we are thinking back to this woman who was apricot chewing gum scented. Smelled like betrayal. Yeah, man. Fuck everything. Total blackout forever. Was that the X something? The bloated corpse of the past resurfacing. No, it was beautiful. Beautiful. Believe me, stupid ape. Its lack of beauty was not the problem. Where is Voyager Road? There is no Voyager Road. There are no roads, no houses, no lights in the windows. It's all on. Pause. This ancient reptilian brain of mine. Enough, just lie there. Motionless. You think they would let you? Until you disintegrate into biomolecules. No. Someone is breathing on your face now, inspecting your pupils, stupid idiot. I've got Kim over me like this, with a flashlight, just like shining it into my eyes. He's like, hello? What is that? It's cold. Yes. They're pouring oh. something on you. It's in you. And it. It's delicious. It's delicious. Glowing lights on a dashboard emerge out of darkness. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm coming back. Oh, I'm I'm coming back. Oh, there's the, there it is. Oh, where am I? The upholstered cabin of Lieutenant Kitsuragi's motor carriage. Nice. Seated in the driver's basket. The air is thick with leatherworks and heavy fuel oil. Cold water runs down your chin. Nice. Drink. Water. The lieutenant is extending a small canister to your mouth. I will drink. The water is cold, silvery. The stuff of life itself, as it pours down your parched throat. The pounding in your head recedes. The darkness parts. Drink. You haven't drunk water in two days. Did you know the human body is not made to survive on alcohol alone? You need a secondary form of hydration. I will drink again. With greedy gulps. You down half a liter of cold water. Some of it spills on the driver's seat. The lieutenant pays no heed to it. What happened? <laughs> Me stuck with my expression. Uh, I should ask you the same. You were reading your paperwork. Then you passed out. I carried you to my kinema to take you to a hospital. Then you came to. It looks like I've only been out for like... Not long. It's, it's it's still within the same hour. Ten minutes, maybe. Yeah, not long. Um, I came in contact with the burnt-out ruins of the past, Lieutenant. That does sometimes happen. He hands you the remains of your ledger. 
He replies with such understanding, it's as if the burnt-out ruins of the past were an occupational hazard. Athlete's foot for cops. <laughs> you dropped this. Are you okay to proceed? Let's solve this case. Good. Cool. That's That was very, very unexpected and very cool. Just when I was like, oh my god, am I going to die again? Have I gone down this train of thought where I've just ended up killing myself from an emotionally induced heart attack? Like, how many times am I going to keep killing myself? <laughs> uh, so we got another problem. Not a problem, but a thought of white mourning. A temporary research bonus. Minus one to authority. Little guy gets further and further away. It takes five hours. So you can do multiple at once, I believe. You see yourself from above. You're passed out on the blue tiles of the hostel room floor. Even from this distance, you can see your eyelids flutter. It's the mention of what? A great white object, letting out its sweet smell, like a lily of the valley. The little man's forgotten its name, but he still remembers the feeling. And look, he moves! The feeling animates him. He instinctively reaches out for the feeling's best friend, a bottle of Commodore Red. He puts on his disco clothes and gets smaller and smaller. So that's thinking back to probably the night that we woke up from last, because it seemed very familiar. Now, if we internalize this, we can have two at once, but we now do have a minus one to authority. Uh, so we're not as authoritative as we were before now. Uh, we've got stuff about putting the clothes in the trash, and we can read watermarks to put together our officer profile. So we know that our first name is Harry, at least. Now, if I go to this car... Inside, you see a set of steering levers. All right. Ready? I turn, you press start. It's next to the preheater. Press engine start. The dashboard lights up with orange glow. The raspberry gauge jumps, and the engine of the Caprice Canadian with a whiny growl. Okay, sounds cool. So that's how I turn on the headlights. Like a leopard waking from its sleep, yawning and roaring at the same time. Press the button labeled headlights. The lights unfold with a little click, casting electrical light onto the ground before the vehicle. Nice. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. We just need to stand in front of the machine now. Nice, close the door. Let's go and have a look at my marks. Let's identify me, boy. Oh, hang on. Stand in front. Thank As you. you. Hold your ledger's clip under the headlamp. An iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. There she is. Revachol West. There's a note of pride in the lieutenant's voice. Around the borders of the watermark are dozens. No. Hundreds of micro perforations. Look at the shimmering street grid. The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, and yet the major arteries of Revachol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanema's headlights. Wait, look around you. A rat brazenly darts past you and disappears amongst the stop lorries. In the distance, a child somewhere shrieks. A woman reprimands her in a voice no quieter than the child's cry. Ah, Martinez. <laughs> Where are we on this? Let me see. He takes the ledger for a moment and inspects it. Right here. His finger near the top of the map, on a segment of coast jutting out into the great ocean. <sighs> Seems like a shithole. It has its problems. Look at the perforations. There are many of them. And they are divided into three separate rows. Tally up the different rows. The first row has 18 dots. Okay, not bad. Not bad for what? <laughs> you don't even know what it means yet. I know! I know! What about the next one? The next is the longest. It runs all the way around the border, and then some. Okay, count them individually. There are so many, it's hard to count. More than 150. At least. Maybe even 200. Okay, what about the last row? The last row has three perforations. Three? That's it? That's it. Okay. Hey Kim, what do all these holes mean? Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They are your statistics, as it were. I should have guessed you'd keep a record. Officers often do. Let's take a look. Alpha male officers who are proud of their numbers <laughs> often do. It's meant. Okay. The first row represents your years of service. 18 years. 
Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? 18 years. I got drunk like a megastar. I walked the land telling whores and liars of the end to come. There are 9,855 days remaining. Uh, I feel like I just went around apologizing all the time. Wait, 18 years I've done this? That's what it says. I might have guessed even longer based on your age. What did you do all those blissful years of your youth? Uh, I probably, I, yeah, probably walked the land about the end days. We don't have long left, bud. Cool. <laughs> I'm glad you joined us. Not a lot of money in doom crying. Let's move on, shall we? <laughs> this next row, the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Oh, cool. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got, let's see. A, f a fair few then. Wow, more than 200. Yeah, nice. Okay. I've, I, those are closed cases. Sweet. Is that a lot? It's quite a lot. Even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually, clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. Nice. It used to be good. That's some solace, I guess. Uh, what's the last number? <laughs> so you're saying I used to be a super cop? Call it what you want. You were a valuable member of your precinct. Now, let's look at the last row. Nice. Right. Those are your confirmed kills. You've got precisely three perforations there. Wow. 200 closed cases, three, three confirmed kills. That's not too many. For an RCM officer, especially Precinct 41, which is in the Jamra Quarter, it's rather tame. I mean that in a good way. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. It's obvious the lieutenant doesn't think very highly of these officers. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. <laughs> so we have that to be thankful for. Have you ever killed anyone, Kim? Yes. He says, declining to elaborate. Interesting. How do you handle the strain? Everyone has their own method of coping. Some more effective or self-destructive than others. Okay, he gives you a meaningful look. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Maybe I should find a hobby. Why not gardening? <laughs> You've already got the gloves. Dude, outfit specific dialogue. Like if I'm not wearing the gloves, if I didn't even pick them up, I haven't even done anything really with the gloves yet. And he, then he goes, do this. It's like the, the dialogue that seems to be influenced based on even minor actions is very, very impressive. It's meant in earnest. Please don't mistake it for a jab. No, I didn't. Thanks for this. The lieutenant nods. Okay, let's go. Right. I'll go turn off the lights. He presses a remote control on the key. Cool, and he turns that off. This has been just absolutely beautiful to really just know some stuff. There we go. Okay, let's have a look at this. Name unknown. We know that our first name seems to be Harry. Rank unknown. Superstar Cop 3. Apocalypse Cop 2. Communist 3. Fascist 1. Ultra Liberal 1. Moralist 0. Good guy. Good cop, bad cop 3. I'm assuming that maybe this comes into... Uh, things that we've chosen um, along the way, maybe, which means I've I've made a mistake there. Uh, people killed three cases solved, two hundred and sixteen, and years in service, eighteen years. Wow, this is very impressive. Uh, I'm very taken aback by just the the level of detail in this game. It's it's really interesting. Now, I didn't get a chance to check the the yellow man mug. Um, because of, you know, on the account of passing out while reading my ledger. Uh, this broken-eared mug somehow made its way into the Whirling and Rags dumpster to pick a person of Samaran descent frolicking in a field of saffron flowers, bucktooth and grinning feeble-mindedly. It appears to be a cheap knockoff of some colonial-era antique. It's just a racist mug. What's there to read here? Not much. I know. Oh boy, here we go. What are you going to say about a broken, tossed away mug that you dug out of the garbage? Is 
Smuggard is, is an example of prejudice. I'm going to use it an example of what not to do. But it was in the trash. Why not just call it out when you see it? Or do some volunteering work. Just finish your case, detective. Thank you. I mean, I pulled it out to see if there's anything interesting about it. Not necessarily to make a statement, but there you go. Weird. Interesting, though. And then on our tools, we have our Ledger of Failure and Hatred, which gives us a plus one to Inland Empire and Empathy and a minus two to Authority, however. But it has... looks like it's been cleaned up. This is the same ledger you found in the trash, only worse somehow. It makes you think about the letter, about the woman's handwriting, about not wanting to get out of bed in the morning. So because of the path that we took with the ledger by deciding to open the compartment and read that information and pass out, the ledger is now different which is very, very interesting. That's crazy. All right. So we've done a little bit more investigating, uh, both uh, internally and outwardly with, uh, with the trash and our own trash. And with that one, we will bring this episode of Disco Elysium to a close. Thank you so much for joining me for episode two. I am fascinated, really enjoying the game so far. Uh, we're going to continue on next time by just solving this damn case. So we'll go through it and we'll see what we can find. We'll check out those other case files as well and potentially finish some additional thoughts. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.